session brought to you by Team Biotools Exam Prep. I hope all of you are doing really well. Through the course of this lecture, we will try and review, revise a couple of important pointers, which will be, which will be very helpful uh, to prepare for your upcoming entrances. We have already been discussing a couple of them, uh, and we will, of course, just make sure that we're keeping the momentum high. Uh, today, uh, what will be the agenda? We've got five quick icebreaker questions, and post that, we'll be revising your concepts via a couple of questions. So without further ado, I think let's just very quickly get started with today's session. Uh, let's just quickly, quickly commence. Um, so like I said, today first we'll have five icebreaker questions. And these icebreaker questions are slightly different questions from what we've been practicing. And then we'll go on to a quick revision of whatever we've done so far. Good evening. Hi, Nikomoni, Rupesh, Divyani. Uh, there's Neha, there's Prashant, there's Kriti, uh, there's Bibu Prava, Divyani. All right. Um, I think without further ado, let's just very, very quickly dive into. Uh, just make sure that, you know, we are all set with Wizavi today session okay uh, so like I said we will be focusing a lot on reviewing there'll be a lot of emphasis on a revision of a couple of important concepts that we've been looking at so far and besides that we will also try and make sure that we're diving into some sundry new concepts also which will be beneficial from your examination perspective all right okay so without further ado i think let's just very quickly get started with today's session um also on the telegram platform we will try to make sure that we are practicing uh, over 20 uh, questions as well as covering over 20 concepts with all of you uh, on a daily basis so please feel free to stay tuned on the telegram platform resource sharing will also take place via the telegram platform and any classes that we'll be conducting now um uh, especially the free app classes or the free YouTube sessions, we will be sharing the notification on the Telegram platform. So please stay connected right now on the Telegram. That's actually one of the best ways to uh, keep in touch. All right. Okay. Uh... Jyotsa, but you can write to me. We can definitely uh, conduct a session on UPPGT for sure, right? So you can just write to me, just mail me, uh, and um, and and then you know we can we can take it up from there. All right. So without further ado, I think let's just quickly quickly get started. I'm just, uh, yeah. Let's just quickly, quickly get started. Like I said, we'll have five icebreaker questions, five icebreaker questions, and then we will be revising. We will be doing a revision of 45 concepts that we've so far discussed, right? So by the end of today's session, you would have actually revised 50 important pointers, 50 important topics altogether. All right. So let's just quickly get started with fresh energy, fresh perspective all together. I welcome you all to the Sunday Marathon. So here we go. Comes your first question. And this first question, I want all of you to pay a lot of attention. So like I said, first we are doing five icebreaker questions. And then we will go on to looking at different questions. Okay. Who is the writer who's written identity and violence? Identity and violence. So please make sure that all of you are taking a note of these five icebreaker questions. Because these are new ones that we haven't really looked at. Identity and violence is written by whom? And I'm giving you options as well. I'm giving you options as well. Your options options are and all these options why am I giving you because they're all important you will have to research them as well you will have to make sure that you are researching them the Peace Chakravarti is very important Neil Mukherjee is important because of his works getting shortlisted or his work getting shortlisted for the booker then you have Amartya Sen again very important uh, especially when we are talking about today's literary analysis and Amitav Ghosh what is the right answer here what is the right answer here everyone who's the writer who's written I identity and violence identity and violence is a work written by which writer who's the writer who's written these are five icebreaker questions and then we'll cover a few important questions that we've previously looked at what is the right answer Aftara Sultan has answered it Vivas has answered it Anu has answered it Simran has answered it Rupesh has answered it Nikomoni has answered it very very important work which is trying to help us understand even under uh, you know trauma literature this work is referred to identity and violence how we are perpetuating violence so there was actually a, a, a an actual incident when amartya sen was 11 years old he had seen the butchering of a muslim man uh, in his colony 
and that is something which which becomes the point where he's trying to understand that he's trying to decode that what explains violence against the community members that is something that he tries to decode that is something that he tries to understand right so identity and violence like i said five different icebreaker questions are there and in the coming sessions we'll be getting more different kinds of questions uh so just make sure like i said just stay tuned on the telegram platform i'll share all the updates all the day and as it is daily basis starting tomorrow we will be having 20 concepts as well as 20 questions for sure minimum revision done on the telegram platform so now onwards till the very end just make sure that all of you are keeping in touch with us on the telegram platform for sure all right remember yesterday i was telling you two two hours of study 10 questions 10 questions um and 10 concepts 10 concepts so i will help you out with the 20 so that the other 10 then you can keep it for yourself right i hope that will be helpful yes absolutely right provincializing europe who is this uh, Sushmita, very nice, very nice, very nice, very good pointer. And I'm also looking at people who are giving good comments, adding value to the the you know the entire discussion. I think that's going to be really helpful. Okay, the second question, which is your icebreaker question that you are having, is you have to tell us who is the writer who's giving us the concept of historiographic, historio. All the icebreaker questions, please do a little bit of research more on your own. Uh, from today's icebreaker questions, historiographic fiction is a term. It's a critical term. Who's the person who's coined the term? Ray Choi, again, Ray Choi has been asked so many times in your exams, right? Linda Hutchian, a very important postmodern critic. So Linda Hutchian is also there. Gayatri Chakravarti Spivak. Gayatri Chakravarti Spivak, who's the one who's giving us the concept? I'm intentionally making you write options also because these options are equally important, especially <coughs> from your net examination perspective. Maya Angelo, what is the correct answer here? I'm so sorry, I was out otherwise i would have actually uh you know typed all of these anyway uh what is the right answer but the content should be given that is very important absolutely right absolutely right great course so i'm glad i'm glad to hear that absolutely right linda hutchian who is the first person to answer this i think harpreet had answered it for the very first time harpreet very good harpreet was the first person to help us just research this even if you can read the Wiki wikipedia page the wikipedia page is having the context is having the examples definitely go over the examples of historiographic fiction it's a postmodern term what is it trying to tell you it is trying to tell you metafiction and historical uh, accounts that is getting uh, coalesced together to make historiographic fiction so when we talk about all the writers like for instance uh, slaughterhouse five or writers like french lieutenant woman where you're going back to history but at the same time it's a postmodern creation altogether very very important who's linda hutchian linda hutchian is a canadian is a canadian literary critic origins of writers very very important and please start manifesting also because whatever you are studying all these questions can also come in so be prepared so if you go back to postmodernism, some of the other concept will definitely come. And uh, in a poetics of postmodernism, we are able to see all, all of these. A poetics of postmodernism, a poetics of postmodernism, we are largely able to see all of these aspects. Poetics of postmodernism, we are largely able to see these aspects, right? I hope it is clear. Great, great, great. Very good. Prashant has made that point. Very good, Prashant. Very nice, very nice. The third icebreaker question is very, very simple. Uh, let's just see how many of you are able to answer it journey without maps journey without maps is uh and if you don't know the answer for this question that means you have to again do postmodern writers again this is a travel account who's the writer of this travel account this travel account is written by which writer who's the writer who's written the travel account let's just quickly look at the options that we are having we are having graham green right we are having graham green who's there edmund hamilton uh i'm giving you all the options over over here edmund hamilton ha edmund hamilton is coming graham green is coming richard guest all of these options are also very very important okay all of these very good who's the first one anamika has already given the answer prashant has already given the answer but anamika was the first one anamika das has already given the answer excellent anamika excellent so that means you have to perfect your entire knowledge your entire preparation uh, for postmodern writings if you didn't get this question right altogether please remember that richard ford all the other options are right uh, we will already got the right answer it is graham green so graham green is actually going so he had a 350 mile walk for four weeks and this was there to discover library liberia what was liberia liberia was a colony where you know a republic where free slaves were 
admitted so he's trying to go back to the heart of darkness in africa he's trying to go to the heart of darkness it's a travel account journey without maps that you know how we cannot always now now what has happened gps has made it even worse for all of us again all these things we are in the late capitalistic era mobile phones what have they done we've stopped remembering the numbers the few numbers that we would remember uh, so so and and gps has done the same thing some of the routes that we we were well aware about some of the routes that we were well aware about we've all completely lost touch with that why because there's a gps helping us so um, clearly what we are able to see is that certain times we do not have to take the help of the milestones but we have to figure out the journey ourselves right we need to figure out the journey ourselves that is something that we are able to look at so please again uh, one more thing i know do not follow this in your careers do not follow this in your careers but one thing uh, right now wikipedia will become a very good friend of yours uh, try to at least take a tour of things that you are studying from wikipedia for sure right do not do that for your research do not do that for your other aspects but for sure for your net examination uh, wikipedia will definitely help you a lot right so do make sure that even if you're not able to go over everything but at least the first few searches the wikipedia search the britannica search the shuddh ganga uh, paper search some of these you should definitely take a look at slide share also you can read uh, some people they've already created those slides for you and then you can take content from there also okay so just make sure that that is something that you're looking at uh, the fourth icebreaker question that is there for all few now this is a little important uh, question why because a lot of times we neglect such kind of questions and add it to the book that you are reading for british history right this is a work diphnatis and cordera is a work by which writer all the options are important all these options are important let's just take it one by one there's james hepburn there's james hepburn there's robert burns there's robert burns Robert Burns. There, there is, there is Robert Eaton. Robert Eaton. So Eaton is actually written as both with U as well as without a U. And James the first. What is the right answer? What is the right answer here? Very, very quickly. What becomes the correct answer? And let's see who gives us the first uh, uh, correct answer. I'm just fetching water. Oh God. Okay, I'm so sorry. Yeah, who's given the right answer first? Uh, I saw Shatabdi Banerjee's answer, uh, but I think before that, a lot of you have given it. I think Akanksha Singh was the first one this time, right? Akanksha Singh was the first person to give the right answer here. Very good, Akanksha. Absolutely right. Absolutely right over here. Uh, so this is a work which is coming from the pen of Robert Eaton. Uh, please add it. Please add it to your notes that you are you've written, especially your Jacobian age notes that you are having. Please definitely add this. Okay. Uh, why is Robert Eaton so important? He he received. He became knighted. Knighted. That means sir was added. So he he was knighted. He was also um, buried at the Westminster's Abbey. Please keep that in mind, right? Uh, so he was knighted in 1612. Uh, his entire, like, you know, these are some of the writers that we often miss out, but they are, of course, important. He's a Scottish poet. When James the Sixth was coming to the crown, he had written a panegyric. He had written a song to praise James the Sixth of Scotland, who became James the First of England, and because of which he got a lot of limelight he got a lot of attention right so please remember that he became the court favorite he became the court favorite so robert eiton robert eiton was there robert eiton uh, robert eiton this is his first english work dive notice and Clorida, uh, claridora is the first work it is the first uh, english work that he's written besides that he was writing it in uh, in latin so this is his first english work that you are having okay so please keep that in mind and the fifth and the last icebreaker question that you are having again and very very simple there is a play of shakespeare which begins with the lines and what are these lines what are these lines to sing to sing a song to sing a song that old that old was sung that old was sung that old was sung from ashes 
from ashes ancient gawa from ashes ancient gawa gawa is come where are these lines taken from i'm not giving you options for this uh, but all the plays are important uh, like right so which of the following please uh, okay i'm not saying which of the following but okay uh, just tell us which play do you think is the correct answer here to sing a song that old was sung from ashes ancient gawar is come the trick is over here even if these kind of questions are coming you should be able to answer it what is the correct answer where do you find gawar this question we have actually done also multiple times excellent yogesh khatri is the first one to answer dilal also answered it correctly yogesh was the first person to answer yogesh khatri was the first person to answer gawar is mentioned in pericles remember the the chorus is something which is represented by gawar itself and pericles so in pericles what are these lines i am gawar and i've come back to life from ashes to tell you the story that never fails to please the eye and ear The, the this is the exact meaning i'm john gower and i've come back to life from ashes i'm very weak but i've come to tell you a story that never fails to please the the ear or the eye and these are lines that are coming from pericles we will keep on of course discussing uh, questions uh, like uh, like these uh, but today now after the five ice breaker questions after the five ice breaker questions let's revise whatever we have been doing today uh, why because i want all of you to understand the importance of revision structured revision we've all been studying a lot but till the time we'll not revise the topics things will not be very helpful for our examination so keep half an hour at least for revision for sure so let's revise a few concepts or a few questions that we've been doing which have got a very high probability of coming in your exam okay uh, so here is a question that we had practiced earlier richard steel's sentimental comedy the conscious lover so what are the things that you have to revise sentimental comedies and tragedies right you literally have to go back you literally have to go back to the period of restoration age uh, as well as the uh, you know the the 18th century so 17th and 18th century drama features a preface to the play who has written the preface who has written the preface Yes, Pericles, the Prince of Tyre. That that's also a very valid point that is being made. Let's just see how many of you are in a position to answer this. Very good. Who was the first one to answer it? Who who uh who gave this answer first? Let's just see the comments. Uh, okay, I don't know why these comments have vanished uh from the screen. Okay, uh, who was the first one to give this answer right? Uh, if I'm just able to trace back. who was the one who gave i think dulal has given the right answer right dulal has given the right answer uh, dulal has given b as the right answer so richard steel again very important uh, richard steel so addison and steel are as it is very important pillars for augustan literature augustan age is also famously termed as the age of scandal this is the age of enlightenment this is the age where we are able to see that reason rationality are emerging it is the age of prose so there are various epithets that are given for this for particular period that we have to be mindful of augustus caesar is being invoked over here um, you are able to see satire is again taking its uh, its forefront in the form of alexander pope jonathan swift is also very active and richard steel is actually a person associated with sentimental comedy because this is the ebb of or the decline of drama per se right and when we are able to see the preface the preface is written by leonard wellstead leonard wellstead is the person who's written the preface so the preface of this particular play was written by leonard wellstead we have we'd actually practiced this question i think two to three times we have done it on youtube itself or perhaps on uh, the free app session for sure uh, so what is happening we are in a position to see that uh, this particular work is trying to literally tell us about how um, there is a movement altogether you are going away from the restoration style uh, which was licentious which was not having any sort of morals whatsoever you're moving away from that style altogether right you're moving away from that style altogether that is what you are able to see 
right so that is another major point that you're able to look at as it is the conscience lover is an important work please revise sentimental comedies sentimental tragedies you get a lot of questions from uh, topics like she tragedies you get a lot of questions coming from Kali Sibber you get questions coming from Nicholas Rao because he's also one of the first Shakespearean critics and then he's writing she tragedies so 17th and 18th century drama 17th and 18th century drama what all is there in 17th century drama 17th century drama you have Jacobian drama you are having restoration age drama which is very very important and 18th century drama what all is included 18th century drama we are largely having uh, your R.B. Sheridan you are having your Richard Steele sentimental comedies and tragedies you also have Henry Fielding by the way so cover them bit by bit so like I told you I hope all of you have actually invested in those A4 size sheets you have definitely tried and attempted to like you know make sure that you are trying to compress your notes because that's going to be very helpful then so please remember that so what are you able to see you're able to see that this play is marking a departure you are able to see that this play, play is trying to invoke morality because that's exactly what Richard, uh, you know, uh, what Addison and Steele actually wanted to do. They wanted to enliven wit with morality and morality with wit. They wanted to make a better society. The coffee houses wanted to shape a better society altogether. That is what you wanted to do right and this is a triangle of parents and children the conscious lovers uh, that you're able to see it's a shift from the earlier style of writing that you're in a position to look at okay who's sent to exile who's the person who's sent to exile he's sent to exile in Seneca's play Hercules in Seneca's play Hercules this is the seventh concept for today in Seneca's play Hercules what is the correct answer here let's see how many of you are in a position to answer it first time Yes, yes, Devyani. Nicholas Rao is associated with She Tragedies. Very good. Bivas is the first one. Bilal, Bivas, Das Priyanka, uh, Prashant, Devyani, Sonu. Everybody is giving the right answer. That is absolutely right. That is absolutely right. No, uh, someone, I think uh, one of you had not given the right answer. So, Lysis is absolutely the correct answer. Lysis is absolutely the correct answer. Hercules is a tragedy, uh, which is, uh, you know, so, so this particular tragedy is having a Greek subject also. Um, and here, what are you able to see that Seneca's play, like, Isis was exiled why because uh, he had the crimes by Creon right so exiled for all the crimes that his father-in-law uh, Creon had committed right Creon the father-in-law of Hercules had committed and the king of Thebes he was the king's king of Thebes Creon is like a very politically um, uh, maligned figure altogether and uh, Hercules of course is like you know uh, spending his time away in the underworld and he had gone to seek out Cerebrus Cerebrus altogether, and here we are able to see that that Lysias is uh, is actually the one. Lysias is actually taking this opportunity. So who's sent to exile in uh, the play Hercules? Lysias is sent to exile. Lysias is sent to exile. Now here, what all is important? Roman tragedy is important for all of you to cover. Uh, you need to look at Lysias. Uh, sorry, you need to look at Seneca or, or uh, Roman comedies like uh, uh, you know when we are talking about Plautus's Pot of Gold or uh, we. Are, we are able to see that how Roman uh, tragic uh, Roman comedies are actually inspiring the way that even Elizabethan comedies are being structured altogether. So uh, all of these things become important. Classical drama is of course important. Just make small little notes on the summaries of important plays altogether. So Hercules, this is a Roman tragedy which is written by Seneca. Next time you can get what is the complete name of Seneca? Lucius Ananus Seneca. This is also important. And Lysias is exiled. Lysias is exiled. Who is exiling him? Creon is exiling him he's exiled for his crimes by creon the father-in-law of hercules right so these all questions will come who's exiled uh, lysias is exiled who has exiled lysias creon as i uh, uh, he's the one who's creon was very politically astute very very politically astute right very cunning very maligned for for these kind of attitudes okay hercules is of course a way uh, and we are able to see that lysias is actually the one um, who is who is then uh, being being completely deposed because of his crimes that he has committed 
Okay, which of the following is known as an impressionistic critic? Impressionistic critic. So the types of literary criticism, uh, this topic comes under types of criticism that we are having. The types of criticism, that is what this topic is largely coming under. What is the correct answer here? <coughs> Yeah, Prashant, that's the goal of you are like, there is a port each other, right? Nice. That's how you create a community. All right. What is the right answer here, everybody? Yes, right. Who was the first one to answer it, though? Who was the first one to answer it? Not that I, I, I think I am being bad over here. I'm being nasty that I'm getting this competitive spirit. Uh, but I think all of you uh, overall are answering. Nikomoni, Sonu, Dulal, Aziz, Rupesh, Gaurav, uh, Bivas, Nikomoni, Sushmata, Manisha, Das Priyanka, Divyani, Akanksha. Everybody has got it right. Every Rani Khatun, Liji. Good evening, Liji. Uh, Harpreet, Shatabdi, Banerjee. Harpreet and Shatabdi were doing really well at the beginning also. Very nice, very nice. Absolutely right. Walter Peter, Neha Pandey. Everybody has got it right. Everybody has got it right. Uh, yes. So it is Walter Peter. Please understand the various types of criticism like biographical criticism. Who's the pioneer of biographical criticism, right? Uh, similarly, impressionistic criticism. So the various types of criticism also have have to be has to be done what i'm planning to come up with is on youtube i'm planning to come up in september itself with five uh you know five marathon sessions for at least five topics so that at least you can revise um uh, you know those five topics with us uh, which are important for your exam i'll share the schedule on the telegram platform very soon very very soon i think within 24 to 48 hours i'll share the, the schedule with all of you Okay, all right. So impressionistic criticism here we are able to see that uh, Walter Peter is actually associated with it. Okay, so please remember he is known as an impressionistic critic. Um, here you can keep this in mind that William Hazlitt also has written this essay on genius and common sense. You decide from feeling and not from reason. That is from the impression of a number of things on the mind. Though you may not be able to analyze or account for it in the several particulars. Right. So uh, that is what you are talking about you what is he trying to say he's trying to say that you know a lot of times we are just taking actions because of a gut feeling you feel like studying for an hour more right or you feel like not studying for an hour more so uh, that is most important right that's most important that you need to keep in mind all right okay neha that's really sweet of you um so please remember that and of course like uh, this is how you you largely taking but, but don't get swayed also and stop studying okay next question which of the following journals is dedicated to the field of cultural studies i think we are doing this for the 10th 15th time right so nobody should get it wrong for sure <laughs> Let's see how many of you are in, in a position to get this answer right. Great, 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 great. Uh... Yeah, so I think mostly everybody got it right. Everybody has got this right. Uh, starting from, uh, I think Nutal. Nutal has answered it correctly, right? Nutal was the first one to answer it, is it? Or Nutal was answering for the previous one? Because accidentally or coincidentally, the previous one was also B, right? Walter Peter. So here I cannot really tell from where is the first one starting. Um, so Nutal perhaps gets it over here. At least I could make out it's Nutal, right? Uh, Nutal, right? Nutal was there. Anyway, all right. Uh, so, uh, Topaya is absolutely the correct answer. We've done this question multiple times. Topaya, peer-reviewed research papers that are coming on cultural studies. Cultural studies, cultural critics, please make a note of them. They will be very, very helpful. Who is the author of the essay, Occasional Discourse on the Negro Question? Today's, uh, uh, you know, some important revision questions I'm going, but going forward, I'll be getting for all the sessions now that we'll be having either on YouTube or on app, we will be taking some fresh questions also so please be aware and keep on revising whatever you've done yourself also okay what is the correct answer here everyone what is the correct answer here very quickly again i think a question that we've largely done so many times right we've largely done so many times sonu rajavat has given the right answer sonu got it uh, right for the very first time absolutely right this is thomas carlyle occasional discourse on the negro question here what is he telling you about he's trying to say that okay fine uh, you are all against uh, slavery but he's trying to say reintroduce slavery he's trying to say not everybody he 
he's saying a you need to understand that not everybody wants to be emancipated also so let at least uh, so so that is pre predominantly what he's talking about and uh, he's trying to uh, uh, he's trying to suggest that let's just get back slavery he's trying to suggest that slavery should be incorporated again that is what he's talking about right so uh, please keep that in mind uh, occasional discourse on the negro question this essay was published first anonymously in the fraser magazine and he is wanting to reintroduce slavery in the west indies that is what he's trying to do right so that is another major aspect that we're able to see what was the name of the sugarcane plantation of the sugarcane plantation where the protagonist lived in andrea levy's historical novel that long song i again i think a question that we've largely done so many times and my primary purpose is that you know of course in the uh, upcoming sessions we will change our nikomoni got it right neha pandey got it right very good neha uh, nikomoni both of you got it right neha was the first person to get it right absolutely right amity is the right answer uh, for that everybody has got it right perfect 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 yes 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 absolutely right so that long song this is a historical novel this is a historical novel by andrea Le which is coming in 2010 this was a recipient of the walter scott prize look at the walter scott prize as well this is important this is a memoir by the elderly jamaican woman who was there in the 19th century during the final years of slavery altogether right so suddenly if you if you're opening even even uh, you know if you're just opening up uh, or if somebody had not got the freedom and these are th this is something that you find in prison narratives also that somebody who's been in custody immediately it's becoming difficult for that person to accommodate and adjust right so it's telling you the story of this young slave girl july uh, she lives at amity the sugarcane plantation that is the question and here you know her mother kitty the slaves they're working um, on the land and there is a white woman caroline mortimer next time you can get this question also so here uh, you know literally the immigrant jamaicans uh, element of racism going back to the historical uh, account altogether how immediately uh, just like even for animals for that matter this is a concept in animal studies also there are a lot of times these pet birds uh, and this is these are experiments that are conducted these pet birds when you give them uh, freedom they're not able to accommodate to that freedom immediately they take a little while right it takes them a little while to understand what is freedom and sometimes those pet birds want to go back so that is the reason when we are looking at the previous question where thomas carlyle is also talking about the same thing all together right giving him the benefit of doubt which is again wrong because you know freedom is really important but occasional discourse on the negro question is also talking about the same thing right is also discussing the same thing next question is so simple i want each and every one of you to give me the right answer specialization is associated with what is specialization associated with nobody should get this wrong please i'll uh, my heart will be broken completely what is the right answer here very good asis yes uh, who was the first one to answer it i think shilpa nandi had answered it first right shilpa got this right first shilpa nandi has answered it first very good shilpa very nice shilpa got it first shilpa nandi has got it first right shilpa very nice bachche uh, this is henry leferberg i hope nobody gets this wrong at all because i think this this must be like the 50th time that we are practicing this question right on the free uh, platform zones itself specialization again that is the reason i'm saying now whatever sessions we'll be having i'll be getting a lot of new questions also but that does not means that you will not be revising you will have to do a revision of all the questions that that we've been discussing because the exam got like rescheduled multiple times so please make sure that revision is something that you're taking ownership of right so that is what we're talking about it's it's social spaces this is literally trying to tell you that you know social spaces are becoming so just like uh, for instance if i tell you i'm feeling hungry and i also want to uh, you know i also want to have coffee so you'll probably suggest me some nice cafe where i can sit read uh, but if i say that you know i'm i'm feeling like praying then you'll you'll recommend me some religious place so specialization is trying to tell you that with spaces we've created small little clusters of culture that is specialization all right uh, for instance if i if i say that you know i want to do um uh, uh, of course if it's it's uh, it's not a 
like you know it's not your drishyam uh, but if it's not drishyam then uh, then if i probably say that you know i want to do a bhandara or a jagrata or i want to do a, a part you'll never recommend me a goa for instance right why, why is that lefebvre will say it's because of spatialization right it's because of spatialization altogether so that is essentially what we are able to see just make a catalog of cultural studies critics and their their terms which are there okay so just do that uh, all right eve kosovsky sedgwick's 1990 book epistemology of the closet she analyzes which of the following set of authors to propel her argument about binary oppositions to talk about her uh, entire discourse on binary oppositions what is the correct answer here <clears throat> what becomes the correct answer here if you want Okay, there are bright students who got my joke. Perhaps Aziz, right? Ah, uh, right, right. Aftara has got it right. Aftara, Dulal, no, Aftara, Dulal. Anu, Anu, very nice. Aftara was the first one to get this right. Ah, uh, here, absolutely right, absolutely right. Aftara, very nice. Aftara got it right over here. So, Eve Kosofsky Sedgwick's nineteen ninety book, Epistemology of the Closet. She's analyzing. She's analyzing Oscar Wilde, Frederick Nietzsche, and Proust. That's absolutely the correct answer here. So, Epistemology of the Closet. This is a book published in nineteen ninety. Eve Kosofsky Sedgwick. Very important work. She is the pioneer of queer studies. Please look. at queer studies please look at animal studies please look at eco criticism please look at trauma studies all the new studies that are coming all the new studies that are coming definitely take a tour of that that's going to be really important all right that's going to be very very important eve kosovsky sedgwick is trying to tell you she argues that you know um, when you're limiting sexuality to just say uh, you know heterosexuality or homosexuality you're making it very simple you're making it very very simplistic you're making it absolutely simplistic altogether that is what you're you're able to see she takes examples from foucault herman melville oscar wilde frederick nietzsche marcel proust to talk about that how these theorists are also challenging it you know even deconstruction is inspired according to roman selden's book deconstruction is also inspired by western philosophy of questioning and not ex- accepting things as they are binary is something you're trying to rigidify you are trying to codify that is not acceptable that is something queer studies is absolutely against which of the following texts by lucy erigeri again very important theorist does, uh, discusses lacan's work as well as political economy discussing lacan's work as well as political economy don't forget like i'm saying please keep on revising that is going to be really important otherwise things will get difficult Okay, everyone. What is the correct answer here? <laughs> I think Aftara got it right. Aftara is the first. Deepala, Nikumoni, Yogesh, Sushmita, Anamika, Dilal. Aftara got it first. Correct. Absolutely right. Aftara. Aftara is absolutely right. Aftara is absolutely right. This sex, which is not one. Like I told you, tomorrow onwards you'll be getting twelve, uh, twenty questions and twenty concepts on the Telegram platform. So please stay tuned. Uh, of course, the revision will happen through the Telegram platform as well. Such kind of pointers. So Lucy Arigiri, if you're not, you know, just write this thing down. Whatever book you're referring to, you're referring to Peter Berry, you're referring to, um, you're referring to Pramod Ke Naya. Just put it in the feminist, uh, feminism column, or just put it somewhere. Just put all these pointers in certain columns all together. Perhaps in in your feminist Feminism portion, you can do that, or somewhere you should put it, for sure. Okay, so in 1977, Lucy Arigiri produced, published the work *This Sex*, which is not one, which was translated into English, right? Uh, so, uh, you know, again, trying to literally psychoanalysis, particularly, um, was was a major source for feminist. Uh, discussions and people like erigeri people people uh, like uh, so all of these please remember that uh, even when we 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 talk about nancy chodorov or lucy erigeri the marxist feminists or the psychoanalytic uh, psychoanalytical feminist writers feminism is very intricate and you will definitely get a question on feminism they they have made it uh, so feminism gender studies queer studies they're becoming very sensitive about these topics so a proper analysis of this definitely helps a lot Okay, Jack Halberstam's uh, female masculinity. Which of the following statements is true? Which of the following statements is true? Let's see how many of you are in a position to get the right answer here. How many of you get the right answer? <clears throat> yes. 
everyone, let's just quickly try and get the right answer. <clears throat> yes, very nice. You gave cyber feminism, cyber plan. Very nice. Vivas got it right. Vivas got it right. Aziz has got it right. Dilal's got it right. Nikomoni has got it right. Uh, Aziz, I think, uh, sorry, Vivas got it first, right? Vivas this time has got it first. So uh, that's right. Uh, that's absolutely right. Vivas, I think, was the first person to get it right. Jack Halberstam's female masculinity, which of the following is true, uh, explores the issue of transsexuality among transgender, uh, transgender dykes, lesbians who pass as men. He catalogues the diversity of gender expressions among masculine women from 19 century to pre-lesbian practices to contemporary drag king performances drag king performances altogether yes so you know this entire need to not perform the roles that have been assigned to me as as a, a part of a member of a particular gender rereads and uh, listeners diaries rackley falls the well of loneliness as foundational assertions of female masculinity identity all of them are absolutely true halberstam very important female masculinity female masculinity starting from the amazons starting from the amazon so basically what is it talking about amazons were warrior women who were the amazonians amazonians were the warrior women that you had these were the warrior women uh, or going on to say uh, the island of lesbos sappho sappho was there uh, born in the uh, the island of lesbos starting a cult of aphrodite's worship so the cult of women uh, you know, women uh, representing different roles altogether, warrior women, different types and categories altogether. That is something that Jack Halberstam is largely talking about, right? So, uh, where is this? Right. Sorry. So, uh, female masculinity. Female masculinity is uh, something that that is interrogating this entire aspect. Uh, even Tom Stupart's uh, Shakespeare in Love is trying to highlight that entirely. Uh, right. A very important work of quest studies. Quest studies. Please make separate notes. Like I'm telling you, they've become very sensitive to all these questions, and these questions come in. Jack Halberstam. Um, you know. So again, making sure that all of these aspects are coming to. Uh, coming to proper cover, proper forefront altogether, right? Ratcliffe Hall's uh, Well of Loneliness is also important. Otherwise, also you've got it. And Lester's Diaries, rereading all of them and coming up with new interpretations. Who's the author of Tribute to Freud? Tribute to Freud. Who's the writer who's written Tribute to Freud? So who's the person who's writing this? Tribute to Freud is a work written by Good evening, Ravi Pandey. Okay, who's the first one to get it right? I think Das Priyanka got it right. Das Priyanka, uh, Deepmala, Soni, Nikum, no, uh, Divyani, Avtara, Gaurav, Aziz, Rani Khatun, Akanksha. Uh, wow, there's a new name also. We've got uh, Shubhanki, Shubhankini uh, Nag also getting the right answer. Very nice, very nice, very nice. Absolutely right, absolutely right. So, a uh, tribute to Freud is a work written by Hilda Doolittle. This is a work which is coming from the pen of Hilda Doolittle. Put it in image also tribute to freud is a memoir of a psycho like you know her psychoanalysis over a period of time and uh, this is with sigmund freud altogether uh, so basically again psychoanalysis is talking pure as it said so uh, that is a point which is being explored what is psychoanalysis called it's called a talking cure you your mental wellness your health becomes really important the work is divided in two parts writing on the wall and advent you can get this question all together please keep that in mind okay which of the following statements are not true about jabber Woki, a nonsense poem written by lewis carroll what is the correct answer here what is the correct answer here again your language study notes are important do incorporate the history of english language uh, as well because you do get questions coming on that as well what is the right answer here jabber Woki, nonsense poem 
and you know it's talking about the killing of a creature called jabberwock that is also something that you should keep in in mind right you have through the looking glass uh, what alice found there the sequel to alice in the wonderland and it's telling about alice's adventures right that is something which is being discussed absolutely right absolutely right d is the right answer d is the right answer the poem has no so uh, here it's not true the poem has no syntax and rhyme scheme uh, see basically it is not something that there is no syntax at all uh, there is a proper cohesive structure which is there but the language is unintelligible right the language is unintelligible the language is something that you largely are not in a position to understand right uh, but a very very important aspect please keep that in mind do, do remember that uh, this is about a creature included in alice in the wonderland alice finds verses written in unintelligible language the verses were written in mirror writing yes that's right let's just take a look at this this is important this is a nonsense poem uh, it is telling you about the killing of a creature called jabberwock this question has never come can come for sure uh, it was included in the 1871 novel through the looking class this question has come you need to remember that and what alice found there which is the sequel to alice in the wonderland so please remember alice in the wonderland sequel through the looking glass you need to keep that in mind and you know it is trying to tell you about alice's adventure within back to front world of the looking glass land altogether uh, it is written in seemingly unintelligent language but realizes as she is traveling through the inverted world she recognizes the verses that are there that is the reason d is wrong so basically what happens is if you if you you can do this experiment yourself when you have something written and there is a mirror then obviously it looks if you're looking at the mirror the words are going to be in different opposite direction that is the re reason you're having your rear mirror um, which is there in your car which 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 tries to reflect the opposite way right so uh, what are you able to see she understands it's it's an example of mirror writing it's not that everything is incorrect or inappropriate she understands that no that is not the case at all okay so please keep that in mind that is the reason d is the right answer so uh, please keep that in mind it's not nonsense like manto's work okay i'm so sorry just a second my battery is about to go completely forgot to charge and this laptop i completely forgot to like charge this we would have actually the thing would have stopped only just saw the screen okay my bad right so uh, what are we in a position to see that it's not actually technically nonsense it's that we are not able to see what can you compare this with what can you compare this with you can compare this with cave imagery right you can compare it with the cave allegory which is there in the republic by plato because even in the republic by plato that's exactly what plato is saying plato is saying that if this is your this is this is basically your cave and here is the lighting which is at the end of the cave men are looking this side men are looking this side at the reflection they are not only philosophers are capable of seeing the correct light and illumination so that is the reason i hope you understand I, I, why am i clarifying this because i remember once there was a question uh, by students that uh, why why is it uh, not correct because this is an example of nonsense verse because the thing is correct it's it's an example of mirror writing but we are not able to comprehend it right it's like if if somebody gets a very ancient uh, record we don't know that language so it's not that nonsense was written in that language altogether that is something that you need to understand so be very clear about it and uh, review all of these okay of course it has nonsensical words as well right but a lot of english words have neologisms have actually come from this particular work so please take a look at it this will be very very helpful for you okay which of the following are not contributions for new dem demarcations essays and tamil studies again something that we've looked at we shouldn't be spending a lot of time on this question at all we shouldn't be spending a lot of question time on this question what is the right answer here yes sonu very good
right deep mala has got it right dash priyanka has got it right uh, rupesh has got it right neha bakkar has got it right avtara ravi shatabdi uh, uh, aziz divyani sushmita namika uh, there is shreya 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 smoon uh, has got it right very good very good very good everybody has got it right nisha puri has also got it right nice that's name sake uh, right so kumar swami pulwar is the right answer not a contribution sharan shelva and darshan they are contributing i think we've talked about it sharan shelva and darshan they're contributing to this uh, which is an essay on tamil studies conference all together i think we've discussed this multiple times in the german ideology karl marx and frederick engels argue what is it that they are arguing what is the major major point that they are arguing just like feminism marxism also you will definitely get a question shilpa has got it right or shilpa are you are you getting the right answer for the previous question shilpa has got it right but shilpa uh no 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 we have not got the right answer yet Wow, Sushmita has got it right. Sushmita has got it right. Excellent, Sushmita. Sushmita has got it right. Sushmita has got it right. Very nice, Sushmita. Right. Uh, there is no direct link between division of labor and forms of ownership. That is not true. The nature of individual depends upon the material conditions determining their production. The base superstructure is what they talk about. Culture is not innocent. That is what they talk about. They are talking about the the entire tracing back that everything which is a part of our uh, uh, which is a part of our superstructure, the culture that we are a part of, det is determined by our base. where are we going how are we going now what is this called this is called customer uh, segmentation or customer uh, uh, customer sort of bifurcation so uh, segregation is coming in customer bifurcation is coming in you know i'll tell you why this is so important this is important because um, to run google ads facebook ads to run these social media ads you need to segment your uh, you know your your uh, your so called uh, you know the, the people that you're targeting for instance tier 3 if you're targeting say uh, people from age group 21 to 34 uh, you you really need to with a particular purchasing capacity so unfortunately now we're in complete capitalistic times all together uh, so so that is of course their late capitalism so german uh, ideology this is what they're talking about uh, so these were manuscripts that were coming in german ideology please remember uh, and these manuscripts what were they uh, trying to largely talk about when were they first published they were published by david razanov right david it rasno through the marx singles institute in moscow please remember that and they are trying to tell you a very important theme that how can humans be actually differentiated from the animals altogether what is the category through which you can actually distinguish them from animals uh, because you know they they are already the the moment you are produced uh, the moment you 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 are you are actually coming and starting a journey in the world imagine if you are uh, you know you're you're a very billionaire's uh, daughter or son there's going to be like an entire hospital booked for your birth uh, versus if you aren't that uh, wealthy then you know you you you're getting a birth done in maybe a like a lower sort of an income hospital altogether right so that is what you're able to see so please keep that in mind uh okay dialectic of enlightenment is a work of philosophy and social criticism which was written in collaboration again very simple everybody should get it right everybody should get it right what is the right answer here what is the right answer here nobody should get it wrong what is the correct answer here everyone right uh, who is the first one i think sonu divyani rubina uh, prashant neha bakkar deepmala everybody has answered it correctly everybody has answered it deepmala has answered it i think they just got a little hazy so if you remember dialectic of enlightenment is actually a work which is coming from the pen so uh, whenever we are looking at such kind of questions please be prepared that you know the dual authorship is always coming all together so uh, holkemer as well as your adorno these are the two people associated with frankfurt school of criticism uh, sorry yeah frankfurt school of criticism and they are the one who are writing dialectic 
Dialectic of Enlightenment. So Max Horkheimer and Theodore Adorno. Max Horkheimer and Theodore Adorno. They are writing Dialectic of Di. They are writing Dialectic of Enlightenment. This is a work which is coming from the pen of both of them. It is trying to tell you about social psychological status quo altogether. Uh, you know the failure of enlightenment. That is something that they are trying to largely discuss. Herbert Marcuse has written One Dimensional Man. Very important work altogether. This is exactly what is being discussed in Identity and Violence also. Uh, remember, we started today's class by talking about Amartya Sen's identity and violence. We started uh, today's class uh, of Amartya Sen while talking about identity and violence. So uh, this is exactly this is exactly what Amartya Sen also talks about. You know, Amartya Sen is also discussing that we are we. How can you? So what had happened when was that Amartya Sen when he was eleven years old he saw that you know one Muslim man was actually killed when he had come to seek work in the colony of. Dhaka, where Amartya Sen was living. Now, this really disturbed Amartya Sen, and he said that how can anyone just identify me as a Hindu or a Muslim? Because I'm I'm not a one-dimensional man. I'm having multiple identities. Feminists will have problems with that. That you know, why are you using man so many times, or why are you using a patriarchal intensive word altogether uh, so that of course is going to be like a major major concern over here uh, so so please keep that aspect also in mind that uh, that you know these are the things that we are largely able to see now you know there is an issue i don't know why um, my laptop is not taking this is like an official laptop it's not taking the charge anyway um, i think just in the interest before it just abruptly ends what we can do is we can uh, we can continue this particular uh, session again um, and perhaps Perhaps what I can do is we can also have newer questions for the next time. Uh, besides that, like I told you, we will be helping you around. We will be helping you uh, uh, along with, uh, you know, a couple of things. So there are just a few things rather than this. I don't know because it's not taking the battery. Anyway, your homework is first uh, definitely try and do revisions of whatever sessions you've attended. Go back to your notes, whatever running notes you've taken. Try to revise them, put them in proper order altogether. Uh, focus on revision. Secondly, focus on topic. Make your execution plan all together, right? Uh, we will be coming up. We will be coming up with, like I said, five YouTube sessions, mega sessions like marathon sessions, where I'll make you cover five units for sure. Uh, on the YouTube this September itself, I will share, like I said, within 24 hours to 48 hours on the Telegram platform. I'll share that. From tomorrow onwards, we will start with the Telegram 20 questions and 20 concepts uh, that we will be sharing on the telegram platform different ways all together uh, so make sure that you take a look at that as well all right um Yes, absolutely. There is no point losing heart at all. And I'll keep on bombarding all of you with a lot of motivational stuff as well. Okay, so don't worry at all about it. Thanks everyone for joining on a Sunday uh, evening. Really, really appreciate that. Even right now, just put in a lot of hard work, structured hard work. Um, and trust me, the, the victory is going to be yours. You're going to be at the other side with uh, like, you know, a reward uh, plate altogether. So don't worry too much about it. Don't be harsh on yourself. Be calm, be composed. We love you. And you should love yourself too right so that is something that please keep in mind uh thanks so much uh everyone for joining in uh let's just stay connected on telegram for sure all right let's just stay connected on telegram platform for sure and at this class also i will get it rescheduled again right let's just have this marathon the practice marathon and the schedule for the five yt sessions i'll tell you even on the application now we'll have longer classes so i will share the schedule with all of you fine thank you so much everyone thank you so much take good care of yourselves um and like i said don't be harsh on yourself thanks anamika thanks neha um thank you so much thank you thanks kriti thanks kriti uh prashant divyani thank you so much aftara uh gaurav shatabadi aziz sonu yogesh deepmala nikamoni chandani sonu neha thank you so much gamer zone nutal nutal you were by nutal Anisha, Renu, Kosu, Rupesh. Uh, also, please, if you have any recommendation, like any topic that you definitely want us to cover, please feel free to write me an email about that. Uh, we will, or, or use the Baijo's exam prep application uh, doubts platform. It's, it's available for everybody. Uh, so you can put it on the doubts platform also. Good night, everyone. Sweet dreams. Bye. See you. Take care. Take good care of yourselves. Take good care of your health as well. And if there are going to be any other concerns, please keep us posted about it. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Good night, sweet dreams. 
I'm just uh, probably it'll end before I'm going to end it because it's battery. I don't know what's wrong. I think it's charging. Let me go and try it. Thank you.